Being at Hofstra, a lot of the guidance and philosophy not only comes from the athletics program, but also from your coaches. And our coach's first rule for us as athletes is to graduate. So he puts academics as our primary focus, and he really supports us to pursue our academics, and maybe we have to take a class that cuts into practice for a little bit, and he allows us to do that. Balancing academics and athletics is a challenge. Student athletes, we're in study hall, you got tutors, and we have a great new academic facility for athletes, and there's a lot of avenues, and there's a lot of things that athletics has been doing in general to really push the student athletes, not athlete students. want to be converted into. Because E, we want this to be volts, right? Yeah. And um, as I was going through the recruiting process, I was, Stanford is one of those schools, and their coach told me, he said, you know, you're gonna, you should go to the school that fits you best uh, academically, uh, athletically, and also financially. And so looking at all the different schools that I was uh, getting recruited by and then coming and visiting Hofstra, it was a unique situation with the fact that they were rebuilding the baseball program. And uh, you know, I was going to get a play as a freshman, which is, is, doesn't happen often at the Division I level. So that was fun, and that was one of the styling points, as well as the fact that I really liked that I could play a Division I sport. sign because it changes sign on the forward and backward. Yeah, have access to professors as a freshman because it, while Hofstra is a, you know, the size of a Division I school, it has smaller classes. So as a freshman, I was in contact with Dr. Levine, who I've wound up doing research with but, for the past two and a half years. Uh, so those were the kind of things that sold me on Hofstra. That's, I mean, that's yeah, really as an undergraduate, when you're studying physics or you're studying math or so, wanting to do that type of field, um, it really comes down to getting experience and working with a professor. It's very rare that you find someone that's uh, an undergraduate that really can say anything original in that field just because it's so vast and there's so much depth and breath to the subject that you need a lot of background. I'm working with Dr. Levine in something you can call theoretical quantum physics. And so also theoretical nanoscience, if you want to call it that, because we're dealing with basically conduction in, in, at, the, at a small scale. So what we found is if you take a conductor and you look at really small scale conductors in one dimension particularly, and you want to study it, well, in, in theoretical physics, really, a lot of the problems may or may not be realizable experimentally. Talking about physics, where but it's important to understand the physics behind these types of systems because if you want to develop nanoscale electronics, let's say, then you need you need wires, you need transistors, you need all sorts of things. You need to understand at that scale uh, what effects are are going to happen and what sort of properties are inherent in in these uh, in these wires or in these transistors that are going to affect our device. I'm applying to graduate schools, PhD programs, and mainly uh, in applied fields, sort of applied physics or engineering. And I want to use my math and physics background to go into the field of nanoscience, work on energy or medical applications at that level, and sort of uh, figure out, you know, having an understanding of kind of physics and math and use that understanding of, of a small scale and quantum physics and, and be able to try to make devices and make, um, you know, new forms, you know, energy, whether it's solar cells or, or energy storage with batteries or whether it's biomedicine, so you're dealing with particles and drug delivery or, or detection for for kind of screening for, for cancer and such diseases as that. So I'm interested in going into that type of research and I've applied to a lot of um, schools that really are kind of participating in cutting edge research and they have a lot of great groups that are doing a lot of great work. And so after my PhD, I really plan on um, taking sort of the research that I go and go into and, and, com and commercializing it and having a startup company and kind of working to bridge that gap between uh, nanoscale applications and, and industry. So far, pretty much our numeric results have been published in Physical Review B and uh, that was just published. And so now I'm working on, uh, like I said, the analytics, and that's actually gonna be mostly what my senior thesis is about. Great job battling back by Joe Berg. One ball and two strikes. Strike three is the call. Travellini. The coaching staff in athletics has been great to me. You know, they've really worked with me very closely and allowed me to kind of uh, be a double major and, and be in honors college and, and do research. And so I, I'm able to do all these things and it really comes with a very supportive coach and staff who work with us and allow us to really pursue our academics and, and any interest we have. The angular and linear. It's been a great opportunity that Hofstra's given me. What I'm getting to do is what graduate students would usually do at, at a different university. So I'm kind of getting to do that as an undergraduate, which has been a great experience and it's been a lot of, a lot of fun and it's kind of opened up the world into what research is really like.